and one thing i always say because I, I i if it wasn't for a, a huge variety of therapies I, I tried like one thing i always say is like therapy only works if you're willing to put in the work. oh 100 because like i've yeah. always heard people and not, not always i don't want to say it like that but like i've heard opinions of like saying no therapy doesn't work or like mm -hmm. first off have you tried it second how serious did you take it right because and it's, third uh, which modality did you use because mm, if it's verbal therapy not everybody likes to talk some people are mute like some people can't talk yeah so that's true. Okay, it's just that's, like you know there's and that's what i love about dance therapy is that it's one of the many options that yeah. we have now there's art therapy trauma therapy music therapy yeah um you know like all like the list goes on um but it's it's yeah it's just this other way to express yourself and not everybody learns the same is you know is something that i've noticed over all of these years of my whole life i'm always noticing that like therapy is going back to the arts Mm -hmm. a, not one have I heard like here's a math therapy class, <laughs> <laughs> here's a quantum physics therapy class. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's a you, oh. is there, yeah, uh, that would, chemistry therapy. Chemistry therapy fucking blow shit up. <laughs> Breaking bad stuff. Sublimation. That's a good one though. Actually, I mean, it's you what's know, sublimation? It's like when you have a lot. Like, I don't know what if whatever angst or um, uh, intense feelings that you're having, mm -hmm. you. Um, you use that and uh or you use what is it <laughs> i'm like trying to figure out how to say this i'm gonna start over with that um sublimation is basically uh whatever intense emotions that you're feeling mm -hmm. using some sort of outlet to express that in a healthy manner okay um, so, so not breaking stuff oh uh, you can okay. i mean if that's healthy if you're in a room have you heard of like record rooms? record rooms yeah that's sublimation right there. You're so angry. You need to do something. And that's movement. You know, what, that is movement. That's one thing that like that fascinated <laughs> me because I saw that and I saw like a, a, a two different tests. I think it was in brain games. Or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no. It was a it was a different YouTube original. Okay. They showed the difference of someone who was got really angry. They were put into the rage room mm -hmm. and then they're put into and then another group a split test group. They just sat there and thought. Yeah. And then they found out the person, the people that were angry were more likely to be more violent. Many studies have found is that it's a short lived release and it feels good. It feels really good to release. But what happens in the brain is the brain enjoys that. So there's really a reward to build up that pressure again and then release it again. Oh. It, it just this is like a like a like a very small you know study. Yeah, small experiment. study. It, it was an experiment because for entertainment. Yeah. But it was interesting because like because uh, they essentially wrote like the 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 synopsis was like they wrote uh, an essay, but then someone from the other like party, so to speak, criticized it, destroyed, and then shared. There was like there was like if you're a fem feminist, the antagonist was was uh, misogynist uh -huh. and uh, conservative or liberal, whatever, whatever to trigger you yeah. to get you mad is to make our subjects mad so they can test our anger room. And then whatever test you're in, you have to sit there for 20 minutes. Other subjects are instructed to sit in the room passively. Or you had to, you got to break stuff. Some subjects will be allowed to actively take out their anger on all these beautiful art objects. And then once you came back from that relief, mm -hmm. um, you had the option to electrocute him. Oh, wow. And then they found that the people that were in the break room were more likely to electrocute him. And they, they, he wasn't really getting electrocuted, but they had soundboards to make it seem like he was getting right. hurt. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, and then they're like, oh, yeah, like, give it some more. Like, oh, like, you had the option of like, one for a little pain, ten for a lot. And they're going seven, eight, nine. He cranked that all the way up, and he's laying on that button. And the other one was like, nah, he, like, he has, his, uh, like, the people who are quiet were like, nah, he has his own opinions. I respect that. Interesting. Um, you are allowed to change that dial to what you think would be appropriate. Yeah, okay? I just don't want to like hurt him or anything. I'm just going to keep it at low. So the angry subjects who sat passively seem to have calmed down. So it's like, so that's what fascinates me. Like, and that's where I'm like mixed emotions about, I'm my glasses, um, mm -hmm. I'm mixed emotions about like break rooms. Cause it's like, it's a good temporary relief. And I know that feeling cause it feels so good to punch stuff. Yeah. But I also, I'm also well aware from like my own experience of when I've let myself go down that path of continual, like that easy path of just punching stuff. It's like 
it brings up more aggression. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's um I think what's important though is that you become aware of of what's happening. Mm. Because a lot of the time when we have when we're upset or you know have this reaction, we don't think about it, right? We just do. Yeah. And um in that case, I mean working with um some of the populations that I have, um, if I if I notice that you know there's some something that they need to get out of their body, um, some like one really common thing is to throw ice, hmm. um, and because it's you know it's not going to hurt anybody, you, yeah. throw, you can throw it at the wall, and you know you have you can have that impact. You feel that impact, yeah. Um, and but instead of just like blindly throwing it, what I'll do is you know I'll have them really think about like. You know what is this representing? Mm. What am I? What am I getting rid of? What am I throwing out of my system that I that no longer serves me? Got it. Um, and then when you go into that, it's like, you know, you, you start because psychologically you're like, well, I'm now I'm processing like what yeah. is it exactly that I was upset about or angry? You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I like I like that because now there's intent. There's like a a focus on the energy versus like blind rage. Exactly. Which because like for me like I went through through like. I had to do 52 weeks of anger management. Mm. So like that, that honestly, like I loved that program because it was like, it was humbling because like, um, I went, I went to th- into situations like where people did have a worse, but it was also like, it was good learning from their experiences and the tools that I learned from there. It was just amazing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and like that's, I love that there's, uh, you're putting the energy towards something with intent and stuff instead of uh hurting someone so shit um and that's that takes a lot of work to do um especially like i do want to say like that's it's not easy to just stop and be like okay why am i mad who's making me angry right now right like but that's what breath and all of that is and Mm. meditation and yoga like do you meditate or or do you you guys do you guys practice meditation or yeah yeah that's um so also i mean like each dance therapy session um, is uh, unique. So depending on, I mean, as a, as the dance therapist, you'll look at the situation, like where this client is from, or um, like what what they're coming to treatment for, mm-hmm. um, and um, based on that, you'll have certain maybe there's like certain objectives that you have, um, and so. I mean, maybe if it's if there's somebody who's you know constantly like, suffering from anxiety and they have a lot of thoughts that are just spinning and yeah, constantly yeah, yeah. going, meditation is so great for that. Really, um, because it helps you to stay present and to and to be aware of your thoughts like so clearly, um, to see them and notice like they notice it without any judgment. As yeah, well. I was about to say like because I can I can definitely relate to that like in terms of like noticing the thoughts. And then like wanting to react. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And your thoughts affect your feelings, right? Um, so it just just as much as like, you know, your your feelings also affect your thoughts. And so it's just like if you if you can conquer that, like knowing and not and not adding any judgment to any of the thoughts that you have, then you can be like, Well, that's not a problem. Like I don't need to worry about it um as much. And so then it helps to, you know, self regulate and um with the bodies but yeah i mean meditation can be used like certain yoga poses can be used oh yeah um, Ooh, dude i'm loving yoga i used to yeah. I, I just used to just do it for the stretching benefits and but then uh, now i get the breathing part i'm like okay. oh i get it now yeah it is, it's actually feels like my body feels good but now when i actually do the breathing properly like there's a certain lightness yes i feel throughout the whole thing it's yeah like, and um and i love this because you're probably the well, I since I started doing this again, you're like you're the second person to say like, "Oh, we med- I meditate because mm-hmm. it helps out." And it's like I love how meditation is becoming like super mainstream. Yeah. Um, because I mean, I've been preaching it to my dance company, Family Business, since 2012, oh, and yeah. like before every rehearsal, uh, we had to meditate. Really? Yeah. It was like it was always a requirement because I told it was always like to leave everything out, yeah. to be present, to kind of relax you from the stressful day. Mm-hmm. It was only five minutes, and it was. It was sometimes me guiding it or sometimes just like waterfalls, you know, some yeah. white noise. Mm-hmm. And then they would always be like, 
Like I loved hearing them say like, "Oh, Emra, I can't. Lo- I'm looking forward to meditation today." Aww. Like or like, "Oh, that I needed that," and because it's it's the, the nice little quiet time for yourself. Yeah. For some, and it's also like one of my favorite things because I was doing it to help help um, learn how to sit with, with what makes my anger reactive. Mm. Um, and then I noticed like for me, what uh, lessons I, I learned from it is you learn to sit with it and not react and then let it go mm-hmm. so then that's what i think is like the most like was good because it's very like uh, metaphorical to the breath because yeah. it comes and it goes oh yes and then, and then um that, yeah. and like very much i always say like, at every rehearsal so it's like if you can if the simple focus of the breath yeah and if you're not able to focus on that you uh, how can we expect you to like focus on the more complex things yeah and uh so and always i said breath controls the mind mind controls the body yes because it's like yeah i, I love it because i got into it because phil jackson did it oh uh, cool <laughs> phil jackson did it to michael jordan and the bulls and then yeah. i was at I, I was studying to trying to figure out like like how do i make a good team not not like super talented but like i'm trying to make like trying to make them fall in love with the culture of the team mm. and like so I, I was doing like i was mimicking all these things in zoom meditation um um primarily meditation really yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was the biggest game changer and what made us different as a team yeah yeah i mean i i mean i was like always into yoga i was like dancing and i was like meditation i can do that and then i tried <laughs> it was like oh my god this is so hard like i would start to like i think i was using um headspace oh headspace, headspace. is great yeah. headspace <laughs> so this is not a sponsored video but headspace <laughs> if you see this video cut me a check <laughs> well like 10 percent. <laughs> okay. it's something uh, and, and i i used calm not a sponsored <laughs> i used calm.com <laughs> For a year, not a paid advertisement, but calm. You you're know what student, to do. <laughs> you got a discount on Headspace. So, no, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you're saying. Um, so anyway, yeah, no, I did try it, and at the at the beginning, it was so it was so hard. Even um, with the guided voice. Even with the guided voice, I was like still thinking about my own thoughts, and then there's a part where you know you have your own breathing exercise and you go through it. But um, I just yeah. So when I tried, I was like oh, I can do, you know, 15 minutes, but sitting there 15 minutes, actually, <laughs> it's quite intense. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'll work my way up. I'll do five, I'll do five, I'll do 10. And then, you know, eventually, but um, yeah, I think that's really great. I've been seeing articles too about how um, some schools are now implementing meditation instead of, de- detention. Instead of detention. Yes, I and love like, that. Why wasn't I a child at that time? Um, but that, that could be a lot happier versus reprimanded. Yes, yeah, um, you know, and and having those kind of like coping skills to be like, you know, I'm really angry right now. Instead of starting a fight with somebody, it's like, well, let me just let me take a break. Let me take a moment, go focus on my breath, take ten deep breaths, whatever it is they need to do, and then come back in the space, and then they can talk about it and resolve it. You know? Yeah, I think I think that's one thing that we're not really taught is how to cope. Yeah, we just are taught to push through, yes. and that sometimes that comes in the form of anger because mm-hmm. i mean because a lot of us um relate taking a break as giving up or quitting or yeah. and that's like and we have such a uh an awkward and twisted relationship with failure or giving up or taking a break it's like mm-hmm. you know it's really taking a moment to take care of yourself like literally like a timeout in the middle of a game i don't know if you like basketball yeah yeah so, yeah yeah. like in the middle like it's literally take like a timeout in the middle of the game when things are going wrong you call a timeout yeah and like especially like in relationships timeout i need to take a walk whatever exactly so then i think it's this is um this thing called the pause button yeah have you heard of <laughs> so, <laughs> what is it seven habits of highly effective people or something uh-huh one of them i think is like you literally pause right here yeah like you <laughs> push this I don't remember. Pause.